Tony Broom Ministries welcomes you for the following sermon from God's Anointed Word. The title is Godly Compassion. All these people talk about how poor they are. One guy said he was so poor he had a small house and so small you could heat it with a hair dryer. <laughs> that probably doesn't have anything to do with this message no more than a skunk has to do with a perfume bottle. But our message is entitled Godly Compassion. Compassion is something that every child of God has because you cannot be a child of God without having compassion. Compassion is that that just extends mercy. We can show mercy, but compassion is from the heart. Mercy can be from the character. Mercy can be from acts of kindness, but compassion comes from the heart. And compassion in the life of the child of God is just a natural thing. It's a normal thing, but it becomes so easy if we're not careful to overshadow our compassion with being charred by the things of this world. There's so many things in this world that causes us not to be compassionate, not to have compassion. And our compassion can be overcome by skepticism and evil and all these things happen. We've got to be mindful about compassion because we cannot operate and be like Jesus if we don't have compassion, if we don't show compassion. The two main words for compassion are the Hebrew word which is pronounced rahum and the Greek word which is pronounced eslog kniste. Now try to say eslog kniste two or three times and you'll be better off by saying supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. You were trying to say it all that. And it's no big thing if you can or cannot say esplog kniste. But the times that that word is used, so many times, not every time, sometimes it's uh, showing mercy, just having mercy. And there's another word used for that. But most of the time when the Bible, especially in the New Testament, talks about compassion, it's that word, that big old long Greek word. Most of those words are real long. But our Savior, our God, our Heavenly Father, He is a God who is full of compassion. And you and I have to have compassion. That doesn't mean that we like everything everybody does. It doesn't mean that we just roll over and play dead. But we have to be compassionate people because there's a dog-eat-dog world out there. And if we just are acting like they're acting and we are being like they're being, nobody will be any different. We have to be different than this world. This world in general doesn't know too much about compassion. You and I as children of God, we have to be people of compassion. Psalm 78, 38, but he being full of compassion forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. I think of the times when God could have just blown us off and bumped us off, but He didn't. He had compassion on us. So many times He could have destroyed Israel, and He turned away His anger from them. And I think about the things that He's done in my life. So many times when I messed up, He could have just kicked me to the curb. He could have just thrown me out, baby, wash water and all, but He didn't. He had compassion on me, and He loves me, and He does you the same way. Psalm 86, 15, But thou, Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. This is talking about the God I serve. This is my Savior I'm talking about. Someone who's plenteous in mercy and truth. Someone who's full of compassion. And if your God's not a God like that, in this world and even preachers on TV or in the church maybe have presented a God that's different from that, we need to check in and check up and make sure that we're talking to a God who is full of compassion. He's not sitting up there like a gray-headed, 98-year-old gray grandpa in the sky in the rocking chair ready to throw a boulder down on you every time you do a little something wrong. God is a better God than that. He put a lot of stock in us when He sent Jesus to the world to die for us on the cross. And He loves us. And He showed His love to us when, that we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. 
And he came and he showed God's love to us. God could have had every right in the world to bump us off and turn away, not have anything in the world to do with us. But he didn't. He loves us. And he showed us compassion and love towards us. He's a God full of truth, a God full of mercy and compassion. That's the God that we serve. And that's the God we can love and identify with. Psalm 111 verse 4. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. And that's why we can look back and see the things he's done. When I look back over my life, the old black folks sing, and I see what the Lord has done. And we sing that song, look what the Lord has done. He's made his wonderful works to be remembered. And we can remember the things that God has done. He's a God that's full of compassion. Psalm 112 verse 4, Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. When it seems like that dark, dark cloud, that dark night is upon you, you're all of a sudden awoken by the presence of God and He rises up in you. He's a God of righteousness. In the dark hour of your night, He rises with light. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sharamani, praise God. Glory to God. He rises up in you and the light springs forth. The light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehends it not. You cannot keep the light down. Even if it's dark for a long, long time, sooner or later, the clouds are going to break away and the sun's going to shine again. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Psalm 145, verse 8, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. I'm glad that He is a God who is full of compassion. Then there's faithful compassion. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, 31 through 33. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. It's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. As I said, He could have blown us away a long time ago. But He has mercy and compassion on us. And every day you get up, it's like starting over a new slate. Starting over a new bucket of compassion. Starting over a new bowl full of Wheaties, Cheerios. All you got to do is just eat them up. He has compassion on us. Great is His faithfulness. For the Lord will not cast off forever. But though He calls grief, and that is He allows grief to come, yet He will have compassion according to the multitude of His mercies. For He does not afflict willingly nor grieve the children of men. We get the idea again that God is just waiting to pounce on us. And that's not God at all. God doesn't want to judge. He only judges if He has to. He would rather love you and hug you than to judge you and whip you anytime. He does not afflict willingly. He afflicts if He needs to, but He doesn't do it willingly. It's not His will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yeah. There is forgiving compassion. Micah chapter 7 verse 19, He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Where are your, are your sins? They're in the depths of the sea. And the old bass singer sang, Way down deep in the sea. He cast them all in the depths of the sea. Glory to God. And He covered them with His precious blood. Hallelujah to God. His blood washes all of our sins away. No need to bring up my past against me anymore because His blood is already taking care of all that. He is a God who forgives gave my sins and all my sins are forgiven in Matthew chapter 18 verse 27 and verse 33 then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt and we came before the Lord and the biggest thing you can do is just come clean with God don't run don't try to hide don't try to reason it out don't try to blame your third grade teacher don't try to say it was your mama's fault your daddy's fault just come clean with God and so here I am before you, God. I need to get right with God. And God will forgive you just like this servant here. He came and said, Lord, I don't have anything to pay. And the master said, that's all right. I'll forgive you the debt. And we come before him. We owed a debt we could not pay. And he paid a debt we could not owe. He did not owe. I needed someone to wash my sins away. 
And we came before Him. And we said, Lord, I don't have anything to bring. He said, just bring me Yourself. And He forgave us, just like this Master here. He forgave us the debt. And then He tells us in the verse, Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? We hold things against people, and yet we want everybody to forgive us. God has forgiven us of so much. And we'll hold one little tickly thing against our brother and our sister, never speak to them anymore. And God has had mercy on us. We ought to also have mercy on others. God has had compassion on us and forgiven us, and therefore we should forgive others. Jesus even went so far as to say, if you don't forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you of your trespasses. Why should we expect God to do something for us that we're not willing to do for each other? Fatherly compassion, Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. That's exactly the condition this world is in right now. They're just wandering about from one to another, one candidate to another. Somebody runs for president, they go after him. Somebody does this, they go after her. They just go here and there. They have no direction in life. They have no purpose in life. They have no standard which they set their life by. They just believe whatever comes down the pike. They don't know what they believe. They don't know who they believe. They don't know how they are. They don't know who they are. They don't even some know what sex they want to be and who they're supposed to be. They don't even know anything. They go from one pill to another, from one drug to another, and it's killing us and bumping us off by the thousands. We need to get right with God. We're like sheep that have no shepherd, but there is a shepherd. I want you to know there's a good shepherd, Jesus Christ. And Luke chapter 15 talks about that prodigal son story. He done messed up. He done made a fool out of himself. He looked bad. He was bad. He smelled bad. Everything about him was bad, but he said, I've got to go back home. Verse 20, he arose and came to his father. And when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. I want you to know there's a Savior, there's a Heavenly Father, there's a Holy Spirit who has fatherly compassion on us. And He loves us. And that's why He has something to do with us. That's why He sent Jesus to the world. That's why the Holy Spirit came into the world. Because He convicts the world of sin. And He wants us to get right with God where we can have a relationship with God. He has fatherly compassion. If you're here today and you don't really know the love of the Father, I want to introduce you to somebody who has fatherly compassion. Somebody who loves you more than you've ever been loved before. Fruitful compassion. Matthew chapter 14, verse 14. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and He healed their sick. That's what He came to do. He came to heal the sick. Sometimes we pray and when something does not happen, we say, well, maybe it must not have been God's will to heal me because I prayed and nothing happened. Well, I've got to follow up to that. If you really believe that God does not want you to be healed, absolutely God does not, it's not God's will to heal you, don't you go to the doctor this afternoon. Don't you do it. I mean, if you want God's will more than anything else in the world, don't you go to no doctor if you don't think it's God's will to heal you. The very reason we go seeking medical help or any kind of help is because it must be God's will to heal us. If it's not God's will to heal us, certainly you don't want to go give a man four or five hundred dollars to try to help you. And that's a worldly thing, a natural thing, a medicine. God does want us to be healed. And that's what Jesus did. He saw this multitude, he was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. There's fruitful compassion. It's worth it. It produces fruit. Jesus said, I didn't come down here to do my own will. I came to do the will of the Father. Food compassion. He even cares about what you eat and what you drink and everything about us. Matthew 15, 32. Then Jesus called His disciples unto Him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. He cares whether you have anything to eat or not. And I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. Jesus cares about the food you eat and the drink you drink. There's what's called following compassion. Compassion that comes into our heart and causes us to follow Jesus. Matthew 20, 
verse 34. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. Jesus had compassion on them, and he did what they needed done. He gave them their sight, and what did they do? They followed him. When Jesus does something for you, you want to follow him. You want to serve him. I'm not here because the church makes sense all the time. I'm not here because things go well all the time. I'm not here because nobody ever says anything or nobody ever hurts my feelings or nobody ever likes me. Or... I'm not here for all that. I'm here because Jesus did something in my life. He had compassion on me and I want to follow him and I want to serve him. That means hugging a telephone pole and telling somebody about Jesus, I'll do it. If that means coming to church, I'll do it. If that means sweeping the floor, I'll do it. If that means preaching, if that means teaching, if that means taking care of the children, whatever it means, I'll do it because Jesus has done something for me and I want to follow him. Fulfilling compassion, Mark chapter 1, verse 41. Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. Jesus fulfilled the law. And this touching this leper, they didn't think that was right. But Jesus touched him, not to break the law, but he touched him to break the sickness. That's the reason he touched him. He touched him and made him whole. Yeah. Lord, if you will, you can heal me. You can cleanse me. He said, I will be clean. He fulfilled God's law and he fulfilled the plan of righteousness. And he fulfills everything that we need. Furtherance compassion, Mark chapter 5, verse 19. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not. This man said, You've healed me, you've cast the devil out of my life. I want to go with you, I want to follow you. But Jesus didn't allow it. But he said unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. I want you not to follow me from place to place to place. And he called some people to do that. And he said, I want you to do something else. I don't want you to go in this ship with me and follow me. I want you to go back home. And I want you to tell your friends what I've done for you. I want you to testify. Testify. Prophesy. Testify. Do something. Tell somebody about Jesus. Tell what I've done for you. That's the greatest thing we can do. Somebody looking to preach, they're looking to teach, they're looking for big crowds, but the biggest thing you can do is just give your testimony and tell people what Jesus has done for you. We're talking about the man, unfortunately, that was killed and that was found. And one of the greatest things his widow said, I've known this woman, she was a little girl. I haven't seen her much for a long time. Every once in a while you'd see her. But she gave a testimony that's a whole lot powerful, more powerful than the sermon I'm trying to preach today. She said, I am a Christian, and a Christian supposed to forgive. And she waited a little while, and she said, so I forgive them. And I said, go on, girl, praise his holy name. You preach a sermon right there. And the TV was so interested in talking to her, they had to air it, and they had to let it go. Family compassion. Mark chapter 9 verse 22. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. This is my son. I want him to be delivered. I want him to be helped. And I want to say something, the pastoral comment that needs to be said. Sometimes we send our money across the waters. And we support missions, and that we should. And we send our money to charitable organizations, and that we should. But we let our family go without. We let our family just go to hell. Amen. And we support missions, and we do all these big things, so our name will be in the bulletin. But our family don't even hardly know who, who we are. Because we done fell in love with the church, and we done forgot who our family is. What about family compassion? We need to have compassion on our own. Yes. The Bible says don't forget your own flesh. Now I know sometimes your family's like stinkers and you can't hardly stand them. But that's just because they like you. They're so much like you. That's the reason it's hard to get along with them sometimes. I think I better go on and leave that alone. <laughs> There's flowing compassion. Compassion flows out of Jesus like a river of living water. Luke chapter 7 verse 13, And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. 
This is a lady, she didn't have but one son and he was dead. She had nobody else. Jesus had compassion on her and he raised the young man from the dead. And we know about foreigner compassion, this story of the good Samaritan, Luke chapter 10, verse 33. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. This was a man that was a stranger, a foreigner, but he had compassion. And we were strangers and foreigners, away from the promises of God, away from hope, and no hope without God in the world. And Jesus came, and he had compassion on us. There is fellow compassion, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Finally, be ye of all one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, like brothers and sisters. Be pitiful, be full of pity, in other words. Be courteous, nice to each other. Not brash and brats to each other, but be nice to each other. Jesus will help you do that. 1 John 3, 17. But whoso hath this world's good and seeth his brother have need, shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? And this is telling us again that we ought to have compassion for each other. Forbearing compassion. Jude verse 22 and 23. And if some have compassion making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment, that is spotted by the flesh. You should have compassion on everyone, but we don't deal with everyone with the same way all the time because some you can kind of deal gently with. Others, like it says right here, you gotta drag them out of the fire right quick. We got people we're talking about right now that are in the hospital. They're on death's door and they're in the last hours of their life, the last moments of their life, and we pull them out of the fire. Thank God Jesus has rescued all of us from the fire. This thing called godly compassion. And I hope that it will help us all to have the compassion that we need to bless each other and to reach the world for Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, thank you for the opportunity to be in this place today. Lord, I praise you that you are a compassionate Savior, that you love us. We were unlovable, you still loved us, and you had compassion on us. I pray, Lord, today that you bless your people. Help us all to show compassion one to another and to reach the world for Jesus. To be those who would set the captive free, those who would lay hands on the sick and expect them to recover, and those who would win the world with the good news of the gospel of Christ. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You have been listening to a sermon from God's Anointed Word. The title has been Godly Compassion. This has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries.